we want to do is create, sew our bodice together, so we're going to have this completely bagged out yoke. So all of the raw edges, when we say bagging out, are on the inside. All right. Um, we need to sew that pleat first. All right. So I've done that beforehand. I've just sewn down a little section. All right. Um, and just as far down as you want your pleat to be sewn and then press it. So I've just sewn it down a little way and then pressed it. And then you just make sure that you put your pleat on the correct side, whether you want to invert or box. Sort of consider your right sides together. Yeah. Now on my um, yoke, because I've done this crazy shaped yoke, it's not that easy to sew it. It's not just a straight line because you've got different shape curves. So having the pin in that centre back is very important. Um, it's at the point, the net point from your pattern, and you need to make sure that, that all of them are matched. So you're sandwiching the back in between two yokes. All right, and you can see that's awkward. If you've done a straight yoke, life will be much easier. So pin it carefully and sew it, and then match everything up, and make sure you've got it sewn up on all the edges matching the sewing line when you're working with curves not necessarily the outside edge and this is a little bit awkward because it's a mini block and then once I get to that center back point I'll have to snip it to relax it and be able to turn it round so it's a little bit like when you've done these curved darts you know it's got not wanting to lay where it wants to initially so you just got to get right up to that point I know some of you have got designs you might then need to snip right in there with some sharp scissors to relax it to enable it to then fold around for you to do the second half so it might be a two-step pinning process and then again just match up and if it's full scale life would be much easier all right and make sure you're just matching the sewing edges so curves aren't easy because you can see they swing different ways but when they're flipped up they lay flat so if you're uh, not as confident in sewing your curves then consider that with your design decisions and maybe put the curves on the dart or something like that not, or on the different shoulder seam where it's easier to join them than on there this edge is tight it's all about matching the sewing line I'm not going to get it exactly on this little sample but full scale it would be beautiful make sure you pin it and make sure it's all in nicely we won't look too close to it that one <coughs> once you've done that you take it to the iron and obviously that will all be sewn and snipped into the seam and that should lay flat and you've got then your front all, um, and your inside all nicely bagged out okay and give it a press and then if you've got a curve you need to snip those seams to relax them so they lay flat if you haven't snipped them it's not going to lay flat make sure you've got no pleats or anything going on and make sure you've got nice sharp scissors to enable you to do that take your time not like this demonstration so with the bagging out of the yoke they call it the burrito method um, you on the right side so that's my right side of my garment so this is my right side of my yoke I want to join my front panel all right at that shoulder seam so make sure you've got them the correct way round. So when your garment's laid out, you've got right sides. So I'm putting right sides together and joining at the shoulder seam. And do that on both of them. I've already done one. And then the burrito bit is because it's rolled up like a burrito. We use the burrito method to, for the facings when sewing um, neck and armhole facings as well. So this is a good first introduction of the burrito. And then when we come to do facings and bagging them out, it's the next step. And you'll understand a little bit more what it's all about. So burrito method, what you need to do is 
with the right sides, so you've got your other yoke flapping underneath, it's still joined. You're going to tightly roll the back bodice up like a burrito, okay? And you're going to, so that one's laid, and it needs to be laying on that yoke, not where the seams are going to be sewn. You need to roll your fronts up into it as well. So nice and tight, obviously this is much easier when it's full scale. So that's going to be rolled up as well. And those seams are what you're gonna be joining and sewing on. And this is the bagging out stage. So you roll it up. Okay, and then, because you've rolled them up, that flappy second inner lining yoke will lay flat and you'll be able to have all of those tucked up inside and make sure they're tucked out of the way because you're only wanting to sew that seam line again. So you're going to pin that shoulder seam and sew on that seam line and do that for both sides. Match it, take your time, pin it, tack it, whatever you need to do. Alright, so you can see all the bodices are rolled up out the way and you've just then sewing through. So what you're doing is sandwiching the front in that yoke. And you do that on both of the shoulder seams, so make sure that's all folded up and rolled out of the way like the burrito. And you're only sewing through those. Obviously when you're working on a full scale it's much easier and less fiddly. And then you've got this nice burrito which you've got to unfold. Full scale it's much easier. Um, either out the... Um, armholes or I think this one will be easier out the neck and what you're doing is you're pulling those out did you see that and then you can see that side is all nicely sandwiched so I just got hold of it and I just pushed it I did it into the neck pulled the bodices that you rolled up out and they flip open and then you can see I've got a nice bagged out yoke.